One day, everything will end in silence. Not with a dramatic explosion, nor with the universe being torn apart, but with something much more subtle, and in a way, unsettling. A slow and eternal freeze. The end of everything is not expected to be a big bang, but a final breath that stretches on for trillions and trillions of years, until there is nothing left happening anywhere. Today, when we look at the sky, we still see a living universe. Stars being born, galaxies colliding, supernovas exploding. On a cosmic scale, we are still in the universe's childhood. But just as stars die, the cosmos itself is heading toward a future in which there will be no more light, no more heat, and no processes capable of sustaining any form of life. This scenario is known as the Big Freeze, or the heat death of the universe. To understand why this should happen, we need to go back to the beginning. The universe was born about 13.8 billion years ago, incredibly hot and dense. In its first moments, everything was radiation and elementary particles compressed into a tiny space. As the universe expanded, it also cooled. The first atoms formed, then the first stars. And those stars began fusing hydrogen into helium, releasing energy and flooding the cosmos with light. These stars were the first power plants of order in a universe that naturally tends toward chaos. And this is where a key concept comes in to understand the end of everything, entropy. In simple terms, entropy is a measure of disorder. Organized systems tend to become disorganized over time if there is no energy available to maintain them. A glass that falls to the floor shatters on its own, but it does not reassemble itself. The same reasoning applies to the entire universe. Every star that shines is, in a way, burning through the very possibility of keeping order. It takes fuel in a concentrated state and turns it into energy and particles that are more spread out and messy. Little by little, the stock of fuel available in the universe is being used up. And because that stock is finite, a time comes when there simply will not be material under the right conditions to form new stars. At the same time, the universe is not only evolving, it is also expanding. Galaxies are moving away from one another, and this expansion is accelerating because of something we call dark energy. We do not know exactly what it is, but we know its effect. The space between galaxies grows faster and faster. This means that, as time passes, galaxies will isolate themselves from one another, separated by distances so vast that they will become invisible beyond the cosmic horizon. In a distant future, an observer in a galaxy like ours will no longer see the universe as we do today. The other galaxies will have receded so far that they will disappear from view. The cosmos will seem small, dark, and empty, even if there are still trillions of stars scattered across regions that will never communicate with each other again. But the bigger problem, on an even longer time scale, is that these stars will also run out. Their fuel is not infinite. First, the most massive stars will die in spectacular explosions, leaving behind black holes or neutron stars. Then, stars like the Sun will swell into red giants and finally become white dwarfs, hot stellar remnants with no nuclear fusion, which will only cool down very slowly. In the end, only the smallest stars will remain, the red dwarfs. They are the longest lived in the universe and can shine for up to trillions of years, but not even they escape. On timescales so long they are hard to imagine, these stars will also consume their fuel and go dark. At that point, the universe will have entered an era in which practically no new stars are being born. The sky will grow poorer and poorer in points of light. What remains then are stellar corpses, white dwarfs, brown dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. White dwarfs will keep cooling, emitting less and less radiation until they become practically invisible objects called black dwarfs. In practice, they will be balls of cold matter wandering through space, with no light of their own, 
Even this cooling process takes an absurd amount of time, much longer than the current age of the universe. Meanwhile, galaxies will undergo another kind of evolution. Collisions and gravitational interactions will fling many stars out of their galaxies, and central black holes will grow by devouring gas, stars, and even other black holes. In an unimaginably distant future, most of the matter that still interacts in any way will be concentrated in gigantic black holes. This phase is the era of black holes. They will be the last major actors in the universe. Even at this stage, energetic processes will still exist. Collisions of black holes can generate intense gravitational waves, and particles falling around them can release energy before crossing the event horizon. But compared to the young universe, full of vibrant stars and galaxies, this will already be an old and weary cosmos. Yet not even black holes are eternal. Physics predicts that, very slowly, they lose energy through a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. On absurdly large timescales, even the largest black holes will evaporate, releasing their mass in the form of light particles. When that happens, the universe will enter an even more extreme stage of emptiness. At that point, there will be no more stars, no planets, no black holes, only an extremely diluted soup of subatomic particles, very low energy photons, and perhaps some other exotic forms of matter or radiation. Entropy will have reached such a high value that there will be virtually no processes capable of creating new complex structures. Everything will be spread out, cold and uniform. This is what we call heat death, a state in which the universe reaches an almost perfect equilibrium, where there are no longer significant temperature differences between different regions of space. Without temperature differences, there is no energy flow. Without energy flow, there is no work, no engines, no chemistry, no life. Time still exists, but nothing new happens. It is like a clock that still tells the hour, but whose mechanism stopped long ago. From the standpoint of physics, this is a natural end. The second law of thermodynamics, the one that speaks of increasing entropy, is being respected on a cosmic scale. The universe slowly spent its capacity to sustain complex processes until nothing was left but immense cold and absolute silence. It is important to remember that these predictions depend on our current understanding of cosmology. If the nature of dark energy is different from what we think, the final fate could change. Some models suggest a big rip in which expansion becomes so extreme it would tear atoms and particles apart. Other, older scenarios spoke of a big crunch, a collapse back into a dense state. But with the observations we have today, the big freeze seems to be the most likely outcome. And that raises a question that inevitably comes up. What does this mean for us? On human timescales, all of this is almost irrelevant. The heat death of the universe is so far in the future that, in practice, we will never get there. The Earth, the Sun, and even the Milky Way itself will have disappeared long before that. But at the same time, this perspective changes the way we see the present. We are living in an incredibly special period in cosmic history. The universe is still young enough to have stars shining everywhere, galaxies in full activity, planets with stable conditions, and windows of time in which life can arise and evolve. For a civilization capable of looking at the sky and asking, how does all this end? This is the moment when the universe is most interesting and dynamic. When you look at a starry night, you are seeing a temporary and privileged phase in the history of the cosmos, an interval between the extremely hot chaos of the beginning and the frozen silence of the end. The very existence of conscious beings capable of reflecting on the universe's fate is a fragile phenomenon sustained by a rare combination of physical, chemical, and astronomical conditions. Knowing that one day everything will end does not make this moment any less valuable. On the contrary, 
It gives even more weight to the fact that we are here now, with the chance to understand a little more about the grand stage we inhabit. The universe will not last forever in a state favorable to life. But while this period exists, it is up to us to seize the opportunity to observe, study, and try to understand. In the end, the Big Freeze is not just a cold, distant prediction about temperatures near absolute zero. It is a reminder that everything evolves, that nothing stays static, and that even the cosmos itself has a story with a beginning, a middle, and a very, very distant end. And as dark as that end may seem, the simple fact that we can tell this story is already something extraordinary. If you enjoy this kind of journey through the deep time of the universe and want to explore other stages of this cosmic story, from the birth of the first stars to the last black holes evaporating in the darkness, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and share this video. That way, you help more people understand that even in a universe moving towards silence, the fact that we are here, now, is already one of the most incredible chapters in this story.